So in preparing for, for a headstand, one of the most important things is how to arrange the arms so you have minimal pressure on the neck. The first thing we want to develop is strong usage of the arms to protect the neck. So if you look at me in this position, as the elbows reach up overhead, as they would in headstand, pressing into the floor, notice that if the elbows are about shoulder width, I get the greatest length from shoulder to elbow. And as the elbows go out to the sides, the elbows begin to drop down, which means there will be much more pressure on the neck. So you always want to have the elbows about shoulder width. They'll actually <clears throat> begin to, you'll have more pressure on the neck if the elbows get too close. So ordinarily, what you would do is you interlock fingers behind the head, reach the elbows up toward the ceiling, bottom tips of the shoulder blades forward, chest arching up. Chin can be lifted up a little higher than usual, and that's usually a good position, best position for the neck. So this is the position of uh, the arms in headstand. Now, when people are first learning headstand, what we'll do is have them go onto a mat, <clears throat> interlock the fingers, <clears throat> but they don't put their head down because we want to make sure they develop strength without using their neck. So if I come into this position, and you'll notice my head is away from my hands and my head is not touching the floor. If I take my feet a little wider than my mat, then as I'm in this position, notice my knees are bent. And the reason I bend my knees is because if I lift one foot up, reach left foot out to the left, with the bent knee, my shoulders have to work very strongly. If I straighten the leg, it gets much easier. You won't develop your shoulders. So in the beginning, what we do is bend the knees, keep the bend in the knees, head not touching the hands, head not touching the floor, and then lift the foot up to the side and forward wider than the mat with the supporting leg bent. To begin to make this more challenging, we want to put a little more weight on the arms. The way you can do that is to begin to elevate the feet on blocks. So in the very beginning, you can be very low. This is very stable in this position. As you come up, this is less stable. Higher, less stable. Why is it less stable? Well, conceivably, if you push with your leg, if you don't leave your knee bent, and you push with your leg, you'll knock the block over. This is the most unstable position. Not necessarily recommended in the beginning. So if I come into this position and I step my foot onto a block, as I lift the foot and take it to the side, I get much more development of strength in the shoulder. Makes for a better headstand. And you might have noticed right at the end of the movement that I could take both feet off at the same time. So you begin to work so that as you're in the position, I'll just go through it one more time. When I take the feet, I can take eventually both feet off. But in the beginning, we just work one leg because we want to develop one shoulder. If I take one foot off, I'll develop one shoulder. So I'll develop the strength much more quickly if I do one leg at a time. Eventually, we touch the head on the floor. To do that, we'll take a block, take the block, put it on top of the head, and just get an idea of where it roughly balances. That finds the top of the head. It's approximate, at least. And then I take fingernails and tap, so I have a feeling sense of where the top of the head is. When I place my head down on the mat, this is once I've developed strength and I can get up 
onto the taller blocks. I place my head on the floor. Now you see this curve in my head. I'm going to take my fingers and wrap them around the head, elbows relatively close, take the feet onto the block, and as time goes on, I not only can take one foot up, in the beginning I just take one foot off, and with the blocks this high, it's easy to push them over, and eventually you can get both feet up. When you practice, you practice with your knees bent, thighs roughly parallel to the floor for about a month, six weeks, a little bit every day. You can always do this with your head in a corner so that the feet and heads can touch the sidewalls. That'll be a little bit more protective. And that's the beginnings of getting into headstands.